Um, I want to introduce you to a, a little more detail package. This is what we use here at EasyNet Tools. It's a software package called Market Samurai. And uh, basically what it does is it interfaces into your Google AdWords account and it will actually do the searches for you and then bring the data back and gives you much more data and more, much more ability to analyze that data critically and to, to really pick the keywords. Um, you can do, there's some things that this can do that is almost virtually impossible to do manually. The main keyword, you know, selecting keywords based on the number of searches versus the number of competition, you can do manually fairly easy, and, but this makes it a li little bit easier for you. But then you can get into some more advanced things that are, are, are a little bit more difficult. And so what we want to talk about with that is the actual strength of the competitor, okay? because there are two sides of this coin. You've got one is the sheer number of competitors, and the other side of the coin is the strength of the competitor. And that's where we come to our grizzly bear versus our chipmunk. So now you're playing King of Bunkers Hill, and uh, you're trying to decide. There are several hills out here, and you want to decide. Uh, they look like they're strategically good hills. Which one do you want to fight on? On the top of one hill, there is a mean, nasty, uh, grumpy, angry grizzly bear sitting there just ready to chew somebody up. On the next hill, you've got 10,000 angry chipmunks just ready to bite. Okay, and on the third hill, you've got three chipmunks. Which hill are you going to go after? Uh, unless you like being tore up and bitten, uh, you're probably going to try to avoid the grizzly bear hill. So usually, most people I would talk to would want to go after the, uh, the hill with just a few little chipmunks on it. When we look at our keywords, that's what we want to determine is not only the number, but also how strong they are. What would really be insane would be to attack a hill that had 50 grizzly bears on it. So how do we determine, I mean, G Google will tell us really quickly how many there are, but it won't tell us how strong they are. And so that's why we use this uh, Market Samurai software, because it will help us to determine the strength of the competitors for, that, for a particular keyword. And there are things that we look at to determine how strong they are. In search engine optimization, there are some basic elements that help make the site stronger. And these are things that you want to do to your website as well to make your website stronger. And the idea is to make your website stronger than the competition that's already at the top of the hill. So when you fight them, you win. The first thing that you're going to, you want to look at is your on-site SEO elements. And, and like I say, when we go into the webinar SEO basics, we get into much more detail about these things and we talk about them in more detail. The first thing is, is that where is where you use the keywords in your pages. There are the number one most important place that you've got to have your keywords is in your title, the title of your website that appears at the top of the page. Critically, critically important that your keywords are in that title. And like I say, we go into more detail. You need to have the keywords in the in a heading H1 text or a heading somewhere in the on the web page. You need to have it in the description of the web page, and that works down. You know, where is it in there? Is it in the body text? I mean, there are other places where you need to have the keyword, and uh, it depends upon the density of the keywords, how many you have on the page, and it depends on the keyword placement, how close they are, the proximity, keyword proximity, how close the keywords are to each other. If they're right next to each other, then you have good proximity. And we, like I say, we talk about all these things in great detail on that the, the other uh, the other webinar. So that's one element of strength, on-site, where the keywords are on your web page. The other side of this coin is uh, strength. And the search engine looks at the keywords on your page and, uh, the, well, the popularity of your page. Okay, so off, the off-site SEO elements are how many links do you have? How many links do you have? How many other websites are pointing to you that have a link to your website? The search engines not only look at how many of other websites point to your site, but they also give each of those pages what's called a page rank from 1 to 10. And so if you get a link from a website or a web page that has a, a page ranking of 0, that's not incredibly helpful. It's better than nothing, but it's not nearly as good as having a page rank from, or a link from a, a site that has a page rank of, say, 6 or 8. 
uh, that they give you much more clout from having backlinks from those type, kinds of sites. What they're saying is, is you know, hey, if you've got uh, some really good guys out here like your website, then that then they, then they're going to give you a better placement on that hill. Okay, the other side of that is too is out there with social networking, which is becoming more and more important in what's going on on the internet. You know, do you have links from Facebook sites? Do you have posts from those, and are those important sites as well? Do you have links from educational sites? Do you have do you have a link from the DMOS uh, search uh, directory? Do you have a link from Yahoo's directory? Those are things that are important as well. And so by manipulating these things, we can compare ourselves on how we do that. In selecting our keywords, what we want to do is we want to look at the main competitors out there, usually the 10 guys, if we're trying to push them off the first page and get ours there, we want to look at these things on their site and then compare them to what's on our site to make sure that we're stronger than they are. Uh, the other thing, the other some other things that we'll look at is like the age of the domain name. If they have a much older domain name than you have, then that's a thing in their favor. If they have the keywords right in the domain name, that's a thing in their favor. So we need to look at these and determine which ones are grizzly bears and which ones are chipmunks. And again, this software package that we use will help us help show us which ones are the grizzly bears and which ones are chipmunks. So in this uh, Market Samurai package, I've typed in a keyword, gave me the top 10 pages over here. And then it shows me which ones are grizzly bears. Okay, The grizzly bears are the websites that are in red. The chipmunks are the ones that are in green. So if you look at this particular search category, you can see that I've got some pretty stiff competition, but there are some areas that I can that, that I can probably play. So if you look out here, uh, you can see some of these have their domain name for 13 years, 11 years, and so those are that makes them strong. Uh, you can see uh, uh, this page rank that I talked about that, that uh, Google assigns to the pages. Page ranks five, page ranks five, page ranks four. Okay, but there's a three in here, and look right up at the top is a two. The IC tells us you know how many pages they have in their website. Uh, here's this website, which is you know probably understandable since it's Wikipedia, has got gazillions of web pages, and so you know we're not we're probably not going to be able to compete with Wikipedia uh, in that particular keyword category because they're a pretty strong grizzly bear. They've got a domain name eight years old, a high page ranking, lots of pages on their websites. Then over here we're into the the BLP and the BLD are backlinks. How many how many websites? point to them okay how many how many the BLP how many points specifically to the page that you're trying to do so they've got 583 websites that point at this page and they've got uh, 74 million big numbers for my brain but uh, big number pointing to their their domain name or their website okay so you can see that if you're trying to push Wikipedia off in this particular search, that's a pretty big grizzly bear, and he's probably pretty mean and hungry, so you don't want to mess with, with them. But you can see that there are some other positions, some other chipmunks on the hill, and maybe not chipmunks, but you know, smaller, uh, you know, smaller ones that you can push up the hill. Because you can see that number one up here is only three-year-old domain name. They're only a page rank two. They've got 338 pages on their website. They've got 355 backlinks pointing specifically to that page. 718 pointing to their domain name. They don't have any educational backlinks at all. They're not registered in DMOS. They're not registered in Yahoo. They do have the keywords in their title. They don't have it in their URL. They don't have it in their description. They don't have it in their heading. So if I wanted to, to look at this one, I would say, yeah, this is probably a keyword I, can, I could compare. But if you, you know, take the four or five keywords this helps you to really determine even more which ones that you want to you want to select because you can see I mean if it's all red man that may be one you don't want to mess with unless you're a big mean grizzly bear yourself and your page is really strong and you've got lots of links you're not going to want to miss if you've got one that's all green and it's got a lot of traffic to it go for it I'm not sure you'll find one anymore very rarely do I see well never I've never seen one that was all green that actually had any traffic going to the hill. So, I mean, it's pretty competitive out there these days. So we just have to pick the, 
the least of the the the, the best of the worst. Uh, so, but you can you can analyze these things to to this kind of detail. Then once you've selected those keywords, what you're going to do is you're going to go in and you know, okay, if I'm going to compete for this position, I probably you've got to look at these important things. I do the on-page things because those are pretty easy. I put the keywords in my heading and my description, try to get them in my URL and my title. I'd go out and if you want to submit to Yahoo, you actually have to, that's a paid listing. So you'd need to decide if you wanted to pay to have your website listed in the Yahoo directory. DMOZ is free, but it's a little bit harder to, to, to get into, and so you have to work with them to try to get your page listed in DMOZ. So you could do, do those things. The things that are, seem to be more critical are really the number of searches that you have, I mean the number of uh, backlinks. Those are really important uh, to make sure that you've got those. And so you can start working. You can see that you, know, you need to have at least 355 or so. Well, here's one as low as 73 but you need to start building your backlinks and so you can track those. You can see with this tool as well, I put my web page up here that it was a brand new web page that I wanted to see how I was competing. You can see I only had two backlinks, so it's going to take me a while and it's going to take me some work to be able to fight with these chipmunks and grizzly bears to get up to their strength so that I can, I can fight with them and push them off of Bunker's Hill. You can see my page already has uh, a three page rank. So I've got uh, the very first one beat there, but I need more pages and I need more backlinks. And you can see I need to do some other work out here so I can see what I actually need to do in order to get my position on Bunker's Hill. Now we go, we've gone through all this myriad of facts and figures and figuring it all out. I'm, I'm a believer in intuition. You know, sometimes you've just got to take all the stuff that you're doing to analyze these keywords and you've really just got to you've got to look at your gut and say, you know, what do I think about that? Is that is that a keyword that's going to be good for me? Is it something I want to I want to uh, I really want to fight for? Uh, and so, you know, I, I I always think it's a good idea to step back from all your facts and figures and really look at your gut. How do you feel about that? Is that sometimes I've gone after keywords that didn't didn't show that that good a possibility from the facts and figures. And uh, sometimes I've gone after I've gone after keywords that I that I thought you know didn't ha didn't look that good, but I felt good about them, and so I would go after them, uh, or vice versa. So you know, always look at your intuition, see how you feel about it. You know, you know more about business, your business, hopefully, and you can just think about it. And, and uh, so I think you need to factor that in as as well. So keywords are vitally, vitally important, and it's a lot high, harder to compete for them than it, than it used to be because uh, the, the, the criteria has gotten a lot more difficult. When I first started in this game years and years ago, it was easy to best, easy to play King of Bunkers Hill. I could push them off really easy, and now it requires a lot more work, a lot more analysis, uh, and a lot more patience to get those positions. But if you can get a good keyword, and you can get uh, some good traffic out, you get a good position for those keywords, it makes an incredible difference to your website. Whether it be it would be through SEO, whether it be through pay-per-click, or even if you're using those keywords in other places in social marketing or other places as well. Again, we've got other webinars in the future or that are out there in our tra different training packages that you can look at that will give you more detail on the specific things that you can do to increase your strength and to do SEO and pay-per-click and those kinds of things.